Hi! In this video, we're going to talk about compound sentences. And compound sentences combine independent clauses. A compound sentence is comprised, comprised of at least two independent clauses. And an independent clause must contain a subject and a verb and a complete thought. So essentially, an independent clause could stand alone as a complete sentence. Here's an example of a compound sentence. European immigrants arrived at Ellis Island, and Asian immigrants arrived at Angel Island. So each part is an independent clause and could be a sentence all by itself. European immigrants arrived at Ellis Island. That has a subject, immigrants, it has a verb, arrived, and it's a complete sentence. It's a complete thought, so it could be a complete sentence. If we look at the second clause, Asian immigrants arrived at Angel Island. We have a subject, immigrants, we have the verb, arrived, and it's a complete thought. So what we've done here is combined the two into a single sentence, a compound sentence. We have three different types of compound sentences. We can connect independent clauses using coordinating conjunctions, or we can use semicolons, or conjunctive adverbs to connect the independent clauses to form a compound sentence. And we're going to look at each of these three types. The first type is coordinate conjunctions. These are also known as fanboys. We can remember them with this acronym, fanboys. And F stands for for, A stands for and, and so on. So the coordinate conjunctions are listed here for you, for, and, nor, but, or, yet, and so. If we use a coordinate conjunction to connect two independent clauses to form a compound sentence, we must use a comma before the coordinate conjunction. So we're going to follow this pattern. Subject, verb, comma, then the coordinate conjunction, then another subject and verb. And of course we have to end our sentence with a period. And remember that each of these clauses has to be an independent clause. It must have a complete thought. So it could stand alone as a sentence by itself. So the example that we already looked at follows this pattern. European immigrants arrived at Ellis Island and Asian immigrants arrived at Angel Island. So we have subject, verb, then our comma, and the coordinate conjunction, then another subject, and verb. And again, each of those is an independent clause. Here's one more example. This one's a little bit different. Asian immigrants did not arrive at Ellis Island, nor did Latin American immigrants. So in this case, we do have two independent clauses, but because we're using the coordinate conjunction nor, the subject and the verb of the second clause are inverted. The verb, did, comes before the subject. So this is a special case with the coordinate conjunction nor. It's the only case where we would use the verb before the subject when using one of the coordinate conjunctions is when we have the coordinate conjunction nor. Otherwise, we would follow this pattern. Subject, verb, comma, coordinate conjunction, subject, verb. The second type of compound sentence is um, when we use a semicolon to connect the two independent clauses. The semicolon can be used all by itself to connect the two independent clauses to form a strong compound sentence. And generally we would only use a semicolon when there is a clear connection between the ideas in the first clause and the second clause. So in this example, we can use a semicolon. European immigrants arrived at Ellis Island. Asian immigrants arrived at Angel Island. Both of the clauses are about the same topic, so we can use a semicolon because the relationship between the ideas of the two clauses is clear. It's evident. Our third type of compound sentence is using conjunctive adverbs or transitional expressions. So these are words and expressions like in contrast, in addition, however, therefore, consequently, subsequently, nevertheless, furthermore, 
and expressions like that. When we use a conjunctive adverb, we need to use a semicolon before the conjunctive adverb and a comma after to form a compound sentence. So here we have an example following the same idea. European immigrants arrived at Ellis Island. In contrast, Asian immigrants arrived at Angel Island. So notice how we have the semicolon before the conjunctive adverb and the comma after. And that appears right in between the two independent clauses. Here's one more example. In the past, Latin American immigrants faced many challenges. In addition, they face challenges today. So here's another example, and again we have our semicolon before the conjunctive adverb and then a comma. And again, each clause must be independent. It must contain a subject and a verb and be a complete thought. So compound sentences are really important and in fact they're, in, they're essential for writing. They help make writing more sophisticated. They can help you bring your writing to a higher academic level. They help connect ideas. We can show the relationship between ideas when we're connecting using coordinate conjunctions or conjunctive adverbs. Compound sentences also help writers achieve sentence variety and they can help you have more impact with your writing. So thank you for taking the time to learn about compound sentences.